Microsoft partners with SpaceX, and we're getting closer to the SN8 test flight. On October 20th, SpaceX conducted a pre-burner test followed by the highly anticipated static fire test with SN8. It's quite a significant milestone, as this is the first time that SpaceX has performed a multi-engine static fire test with its Raptor engines. SpaceX's Raptor, of course, is the world's first flown full-flow stage combustion engine. It was also quite an impressive test to watch. Prior to the static fire test, SpaceX conducted pre-burner tests on October 19th and attempted an engine test on October 16th. That test, though, was aborted. On Wednesday of this week, the Starship SN8 nose cone, equipped with forward flaps and a header tank, was stacked atop of a five-ring barrel section. On October 22nd, the SN8 nose cone was transported to the launch site. After the installation of the nose cone atop of the SN8 tank section, SpaceX will once again perform an SN8 static fire test. With this test, SpaceX will supply the Raptor engines with fuel and oxidizer from the header tanks. An important phase in testing, as SN8 will utilize fuel and oxidizer supplied to the engines from the header tanks in demonstrating the skydiver maneuver, a critical step in achieving a rapidly reusable orbital rocket. SN9, SN10, and SN11 progress. Work continues on SN9. Last week Thursday, the SN9 rare fin support structure was installed. We could expect the installation of the rare fins soon. In the event that there are any hiccups in the SN8 testing phase, SN9 should be ready to quickly act as a contingency. SN10 stacking is still in progress in the mid-bay, and work also continues on SN11. As SN9 leaves the mid-bay, SN11 should be moved into the building for stacking. On October 18th, the SN11 common dome and far dome were sleeved. Elon recently stated that he's 80-90% confident that SpaceX will reach orbit next year. 2021, and 50% confident that SpaceX will be able to bring the ship and booster back. Also noted that SpaceX will probably lose a few ships before the company nails atmospheric return and landing, so it should be very interesting to see how the SN8 flight test goes. He also noted that SpaceX needs to continue to exponentially increase its rate of innovation in order to get to Mars. From his estimates, the first cargo mission now looks like it could be in 2024 as opposed to 2022. One of the nose cones have now been painted white in preparation for Elon's Starship update, perhaps to act as a mock-up for Lunar Starship. SpaceX partners with Microsoft Microsoft announced its plans to connect satellites directly to the cloud with the launch of Azure Orbital on September 22, 2020 at its Ignite conference. Just prior to the launch of Azure Orbital, the FCC granted Microsoft permission to perform proof-of-concept demonstrations of the service. Now, just a month later, on October 20, 2020, Microsoft has announced a new initiative that encompasses Azure Orbital, but also expands on the service. The new initiative is called Azure Space. Partnership with SpaceX and SES, and a note on computing at the edge. As part of its new initiative, Microsoft has partnered with SpaceX to connect Starlink satellites to the cloud. More specifically, the plan is to connect Starlink satellites to Microsoft's new Azure modular data centers. The MDCs are a part of Microsoft's plan to expand its effort in terms of edge computing, which just means that instead of processing data at the centralized data center or cloud, Microsoft plans to bring the computing power closer to the location where the data is generated. This reduces latency. Microsoft recently tested another edge computing initiative with its project Natick, an underwater data center. In a statement made via video on Tuesday, October 20th, President and COO of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, noted that the collaboration that we're announcing today will allow us to work together to deliver new offerings for both the public and private sector, to deliver connectivity through Starlink for use on Azure. In the video, Corporate Vice President of Azure Global, Tom Keen, and SpaceX's Shotwell also briefly highlighted Microsoft's role as one of SpaceX's subcontractors on a recently awarded SDA contract. For context, SpaceX was awarded $149 million by the DoD for the development of four wide-field-of-view overhead persistent infrared low-Earth orbit missile warning satellites. According to the director of the SDA, Derek Tornier, the satellites will be able to provide missile tracking data for hypersonic glide vehicles and the next generation of advanced missile threats. While Shotwell and Keen did not explicitly reveal Microsoft's role in the project, According to Spacenews.com, an industry source revealed that SpaceX was interested in Microsoft's Azure Orbital Emulator. 
a digital environment that allows the user to visualize an entire satellite architecture, test satellite designs, and artificial intelligence algorithms. So far, SpaceX has launched over 800 satellites for its Starlink constellation. In the past, Shotwell has mentioned that SpaceX would begin rolling out public beta testing of the service after the 14 Starlink launch. SpaceX achieved that number on its most recent Starlink launch, Starlink V1 L13. With Starlink, SpaceX is bridging the digital divide, bringing internet access to the billions of people in rural or remote areas without access. One example of the company's success was recently highlighted via a partnership with SpaceX and the Washington State Department of Commerce to bring Starlink service to the Ho tribe. An October 7 tweet from the Ho tribe noted, What a difference high-speed internet can make. Our children can participate in remote learning. Residents can access healthcare. We felt like we've been paddling up river with a spoon on this. SpaceX Starlink made it happen overnight. Microsoft's partnership with SpaceX should bring SpaceX Starlink service to even more remote communities. Microsoft also announced on October 20th that it would expand on its partnership with satellite telecommunication service provider SES, extending connectivity between the company's cloud data center regions and cloud edge devices in support of its O3B MEO constellation. Microsoft's Azure Orbital is in direct competition with Amazon Web Services Ground Station. Not to forget that Amazon has plans for a satellite mega constellation of its own, Project Kuiper, which essentially aims to provide the same service as SpaceX's Starlink, high-speed, low-latency, global broadband internet coverage. Not to mention that Musk and Bezos are also competing in the launch market, so the competition's heating up. SpaceX, though, has notably made more progress on the last two fronts. According to Gartner, in 2019, Amazon held 45% of the cloud computing market share, while Microsoft held approximately 18%. According to a report from CNBC, AWS continues to generate the most of Amazon's operating income. It should be interesting to see the competitive dynamic between Microsoft's Azure Orbital and Azure Space and AWS Ground Station as time progresses. The partnership with SpaceX definitely brings something different to the game. SpaceX continues to rapidly deploy its Starlink satellites, while Amazon is yet to launch any satellites for Project Kuiper. While Blue Origin has successfully performed 13 flights with its new Shepard rocket, the company has not yet achieved orbit. Microsoft already has partnerships with Emergent, Kratos, KSAT, Cubos, SES, US Electrodynamics Inc., and Viasat. While Amazon has partnerships with Capella Space, Spire, Maxro Technologies, Mariota, Thales Alenia Space, and NASA JPL.